good to have Pastor home. Amen. 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 It, uh, My Lord, it is here. a blessing to have him home. He's been Amen. quite through quite an ordeal this past week. And we're going to keep believing the Lord for Amen. a complete Amen. healing. Amen. Amen. We serve a God that heals. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, well, you get stuck with me today. Amen. But I do believe I have something that I want to share with you and that can help you in growing with God. Who wants to grow yes. in God? Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Want to grow in God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand. We're going to open up in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence today. Heavenly Father, God, I ask, Lord, for you to anoint your word, and God, help us, Lord, as we study it, help us to glean from it today, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. You can be seated, um, and we're gonna turn, I'm going to turn your attention to 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Say, man, if you got it on me if you don't. It says, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Amen. My lesson thought today is a royal priesthood. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that you have been called into something greater than yourself? Absolutely. Amen. You have been called into something greater than what you yourself can muster up. It, uh, ambitions and thoughts that you can uh, muster up about yourself. God has called you into something greater. Right. Amen. Into a greater kingdom than your little kingdom that you built. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So you were not saved simply because you were lost or just so that you can go to heaven. The Lord saved you to serve. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He, yeah. if, um, if his purpose was simply Amen. just Thank to you, take you to heaven, as soon as you receive the Holy Ghost, you would be translated and gone to heaven. Uh -huh. But the reason why you're still here, yeah. after you have experienced the Holy Ghost, and after you have experienced this life-changing transformation, is because... The Lord has a work for you to do. Amen. Yeah. He wants you to work and be busy about his kingdom. Yeah. And that is that is what the priesthood is all about. We um, Sometimes uh, when we think of priesthood, we think of black robes and white collars, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, but that's, that's not the type of priesthood that I'm talking about today. Um, it's, it's, I'm not talking about clergy. I'm not talking about that God is calling each of you to pastor right. a church. But God has called each and every one of us. We have been chosen. We, we have, he has chosen us. He says we're a chosen generation. And then he calls us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar Amen. people. All of these, uh, all of these descriptions of what his people were going to represent. Amen. In Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6, God speaking to Moses says, And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. You see, God's desire and design has always been to have a kingdom of priests. Yes. What does that mean? A ministry of the priest of the Old Testament was to draw near to God, to represent the people before God, then to represent God to the people. 
This word represent is a compilation of two words. The first word is re, which means to do again. And then present, it, it means to show or reveal or make manifest. In essence, what it means is that we are called to reproduce what God, we are called to reproduce the experience that God has given to us. Yeah. To show it to the world. To reveal it to those who have not experienced it. Right. You see, God's intention for the priesthood was to come near to himself. And to experience him personally. Then to reproduce the reality of God's character and nature to the people. That is still God's desire for every believer today. Every child of God has been called into the ministry of the priesthood. Amen. Every uh, th That's what this kingdom work is all about. Showing Christ to the world. Showing Christ to those who have not experienced. We are the light of the world. Yes. Amen. God is not going to come. Uh, he will come back and he is coming back. But he is not on a daily basis manifesting himself uh, in tangible form to the world. Guess who he's going to use to do that? Yeah. Me and That's you. Right. Each and every one of us, we are that representation that Christ is wanting to show to the world. Amen. Amen. It's an important, it's an important ministry. Everybody has that ministry today. Um, it is an important ministry. To replicate Christ to the world. Amen. To show Christ. To show his life yes. to the world. Yes. It is our privilege to dwell in the presence of God. Yes. To become intimately acquainted with God. It is our responsibility to accurately represent. Or reproduce the true character, nature, and power of God before the people. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. If... It, it's not good to inaccurately represent God right. to the people. Oh Amen. That's the reason why God wants us to make sure that our spirits stay right. Yes. right. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Because you respond in a carnal way to a, a situation, you're not accurately representing God in that situation. Right. Amen. You're not accurately representing God. You you allow yourself to go in the ways of sin, you're not accurately representing God. Amen. Because there is no sin in God. Amen. Amen. And, and, and whoever's watching you, their sin, and, and if, especially if they know that you're a Christian, amen, then it's going to raise some red flags in them because you're not accurately representing who you are professing. Amen. Amen. So the high, the high priest in the Old Testament should bear the names of the children of Israel upon their shoulders in onyx stone. There were six tribes per shoulder per stone. Then in the breastplate there were twelve stones, each engraved with the name of a tribe. You know, shoulders represent strength. The breastplate covering the heart, the it is your affections. Amen. The, the, the two onyx stones on the high priest's shoulders were alike. And the names of the tribes of Israel were inscribed by birth. This tells us that we all have equal standing in the new birth. There's not, there's not one that is greater than the other. Amen. We all need to be born again. Yeah. We all need to experience this. This new birth pedigree does not give somebody a, 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 a step up on anybody else. But when we all come, when we all go through uh, repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name and receive the infilling of the Holy Ghost, amen, we're all at the same place together. Amen. We all have to go through that. It's, it, that is part of the new birth. Galatians 3. And 27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There, there is neither Jew nor Greek. 
There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. However, the stones of the breastplate were of different <coughs> colors, and they they displayed <coughs> reflected glory. This tells us how, that even though that we are all the same in experience, amen, this tells us that we might not all be at the same level of glory, or growth and character and nature of God. Yes. That doesn't mean that someone is better than anybody else, but we grow at different paces. Right. Um, you know, a uh, pastor's been in church about ever since Noah came off the ark, <laughs> and <laughs> since 1979. That's a long time. Amen. You know, and you know, some of you might just be getting in church, or, or might just be jumping into this walk with the Lord. Right. Uh, it, it, just because pastor's been in since 1979, been walking with the Lord, that does not mean that he is greater than you. Right. Amen. He's just at a different level of growth exactly. in his walk with the Lord. Amen. And as you continue to grow, one day you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and, and hopefully every day you will grow. Yeah. Amen. There needs to be growth every day. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, it says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, yeah. even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. We might not all grow at the same pace, but we should all be growing. That's right. That's right. We should all be manifesting Jesus in our lives. Amen. We should be manifesting Christ uh, in, in our lives in greater clarity and purity and power. Right. Amen. If we're not growing, if we're not changing to be more and more like Christ as believers, uh, which, is, which is the priesthood of God, that is the process of the priesthood, Amen. Is is becoming more like Christ. Amen. Drawing closer unto Christ and more accurately reflecting Christ to the world. Amen. Amen. That is what God desires from us today. Yes. Amen. But if we don't, if we're not growing, Amen. We're guilty of misrepresenting our Savior to this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just as the Shekinah glory of God produced the glory that shone forth. From each stone. So also it is only as we believer priests spend time in the glory of his presence. Uh, that his glory will shine forth from our lives. Yes. Amen. The more you spend time with the Lord. Amen. The more you're going to reflect the Lord. Amen. You're not going to reflect the Lord if your life is filled with carnality. If your life is filled with the flesh. Amen. And you follow after and you walk after the you know the, the desires of the flesh. You're not going to be accurately reflecting the Lord. Amen. But the more that your flesh dies out uh, and you become empowered by the Spirit. Uh, amen. The, you, you will find yourself reflecting Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that is what this whole process, that is what this whole walk uh, with the Lord is all about. Uh, it, it's not about building my own kingdom. Uh, it's, not, it's not about what I can acquire and what I can do. Uh, it's not about my abilities. It's not about my lack of abilities. Uh, amen. All that matters is that I'm re accurately reflecting the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. We want to walk with the Lord. We want to live for Him. Amen. Because one day we're going to stand before him. Uh, amen. And when he looks at us, uh, amen, we need to see his covering over us. Uh, amen. He needs, uh, he needs to be able to see that we have walked with him. Uh, amen. We have turned away from a life of sin uh, and a life of carnality and a life of the flesh. Uh, and we have turned our life wholly unto yes. the Lord. Amen. Yes. amen. It is the Holy Ghost that qualifies us to minister as priests of God. Just as the priests of old were anointed to stand in that office, you and I must be anointed to access the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are three specific anointings as I was thinking about this. And this is, these are, I just called it these because they accurately uh, kind of 
reflect and represent the point I'm trying to make. There are three specific anointings available to every believer. The first is a leper's anointing. Amen. The cleansing from sin. Amen. Leprosy has always been a type of sin. Amen. It will eat away at you. It will destroy you. It will it will make you where you're not, you're not, you can't be close to other people. <laughs> Amen. Your life is filled with sin. You're filled, full of hate and full of all kinds of junk that that, that life of sin will bring into your life. Uh, amen. But being cleansed from that. Uh, amen. And, and I call it the leper's anointing. The, the second anointing is the priestly anointing, which is to minister in the presence of God. And the third is the kingly anointing, which is manifesting power over all the works of the devil. You see, you have to follow the procedure. You'll never have a kingly anointing where you manifest power over all the works of the devil uh, without a priestly anointing. Yeah. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to get on your face before the Lord. Amen. And, and, and talk to the Lord and have a relationship with the Lord yes. before you're ever going to manifest the power of God. Yes. And you'll never have a priestly anointing until you, without that leper's anointing, uh, amen, where you are cleansed from your sins, where you have repented uh, and you have turned away from sin and you have turned away from those things that eat at you and those things that destroy your life. Uh, and you've turned your life holy to the Lord. You see, it's, it's that process. You've got to be cleansed. Uh, and then you've got to seek the face of the Lord. Uh, and then you begin to manifest the power of God in your life. Uh, yes. Amen. You can't jump start any of those. Uh, amen. You can't come to God without repentance uh, and manifest the power of God in your life. Uh, amen. You can't... You, you, you won't ever get anywhere with the Lord if you don't ever repent. Uh, amen. But repentance is the beginning. Repentance is the start uh, of coming to the Lord. Uh, amen. And making sure that everything in your life uh, is submitted to the Lord. And everything in your life, uh, amen, has ever, ever fleshly desire that you have died out to that. And you have denied yourself right. and taken up your cross to follow him. Amen. You see in Ephesians 2. Verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so make him peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And he came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And ye are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, yes. in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple, and the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You see, just as in the Old Testament, so it is today. Only those whom God hath chosen can come before him as spiritual priests. Amen. John 15 and 16, Jesus says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go forth and bring, you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of my Father in my name, he may give it to give it you. You see, the Old Testament priests, they offered the blood of bulls and goats and pigeons. What are the sacrifices of the New Testament priesthood? Hebrews 13 and 15 tells us by him 
Therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. In the Old Testament, the priest entered into the presence of God through the sacrificial blood of an animal. But in the New Testament priesthood, we entered the presence of God through the sacrifices of praise. Amen. Psalms 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You see, God is not looking for just churchgoers or casual acquaintances. He's looking for men and women who will be New Testament priests, who will be part of this royal priesthood that he has called you unto. First of all, ministering to him and then ministering to the people. Are, are you ready to quit living selfishly or all about yourself? Amen. That's what priesthood ministry is about. It's about giving your life, amen, for others. You amen. see, many in the body of Christ are disqualified from being the priest of God simply because mm -hmm. they're not willing to give up their own lives. Right. Right. Amen. Jesus said, if you, if you save your life, you're going to lose it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. But if you lose your life mm -hmm. for my sake, mm -hmm. amen. You lose your life for the kingdom's sake. That's right. If you lose, if you give up yourself to help somebody else, what am I trying to tell you today? That God is wanting us to get our focus off of ourselves today. He wants us to get our focus off of our problems uh, and everything that we're dealing with. Uh, and we need to look to our brother and our sister. Uh, and we need to say, how can I help you? Uh, how can I minister to you today? Uh, how can I help you? Uh, amen. Do you need prayer? I want to pray for you. Uh, amen. Do, do you need sustenance? Uh, I, I'll help you any way I can. Uh, amen. I have a heart. I, I want to touch and I want to minister. I want to be part uh, of this royal priesthood that God has called me. Unto. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> it's amazing how how little your problems get when you get your eyes off of your problems. Amen. Yeah. When you when you begin to focus on how can I help somebody else? Yep. Now, when I say focus on other people, I'm I want to be clear. I'm not talking about being a busybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about getting in other people's business. Yeah. Hey, I'm not. I'm not talking about trying to dig up all the dirt on somebody else and all their problems and all their issues. But what I am talking about is ministering to one another. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's what this royal priesthood is about: is ministering to one another. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Keeping our minds and our thoughts off of ourselves. Yeah. Amen. You know, it's amazing when if everybody focuses on the other and how can I help one another? Everybody's needs are met. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In the early church, the Bible says that everybody sold all their belongings. And they brought them to the apostles. And they distributed it to everybody. And it said that all their needs were met. Amen. There was not anybody that was lacking. Amen. Amen. And and whenever whenever we're thoughtful of one another and we are ministering to one another, amen. That that we will see that the hand of the Lord will take care of our needs. Right. And our issues and our problems. And, yeah. and we'll realize without even realizing it that, hey, while well, I've been ministering and I've been looking after and trying to help somebody else, uh -huh. God is in turn taking care of my issues uh -huh. and yeah. my problems. Yeah. Uh, and then when I get my, yeah. But every time I keep my focus on my problem, uh, nothing ever gets done. But when I take my eyes off of my problem uh, and I begin to look at how can I help somebody else? Uh, how can I minister to somebody else? Uh, it's like God just moves in a miraculous way uh, and he takes care of my needs. Yes, <coughs> Amen. So what are the qualifications of the priesthood? The ministry of the priest of the Old Testament was to draw near to God, to represent the people before God, then to represent God before the people, to be a, to be a conduit of God's presence and power yes. to be a reflection of God. Amen. And it is true as a new creature in Christ that everything needful and necessary to fulfill the plan of God for our lives is in us. When we receive the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, uh, uh, there, are, there are no limits except the limits that you place on it. Uh -huh. 
Amen. If you if you take your hands off, thank you, brother. It, if you take your hands off the Holy Ghost right. and you stop restricting the movement of the Holy Ghost in your life, mm -hmm. amen, there's no telling where God is going to take you. Right. Right. Amen. If you're willing to get out of your flesh and get in the Spirit, yeah. Yeah. amen, He's not putting limits on your growth. Yeah. Amen. But we do. Yeah. Amen. It's also true that there's also a lot of junk in us that is not needful or useful. So there is a continual process of renewing our mind. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Right. This world is full of junk. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, it will inject all that junk into your mind. Next thing you know, you're being weighed down by the cares of this life. You're being weighed down by all kinds of things, but God wants us to continually renew our mind by the Holy Ghost, Amen. putting off the old and putting on the new. Amen. Amen. It's not a one-time process. Right. Amen. But every day, he wants us to put off the old and put on that new man yeah. in Christ Jesus. Right. It is a continual process of exchanging our thoughts, our ways, for God's thoughts and God's ways. Amen. This requires study. It requires repentance. It requires a willingness to admit when we're wrong, when we're, our tradition runs crossways of God's word. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it requires a willingness to change, yeah. to accommodate the truth of the word of God. Amen. There's no renewing of the mind until it has produced transformation in our lives. Yes. You see the proof. Of a renewed mind is a transformed character. Amen. If, if, if you have not been transformed, if your character has not been transformed, then your mind has not been renewed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. We do not produce fruits of righteousness instantly or without effort on our part. What is the effort in our part? Jesus called it abiding. In John 15 and 4, he says, Abide in me, yeah. and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Right. Yeah. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. That's right. We have been chosen to be a generation of priests, and to show forth his praises. Right. But there are some qualifications that must be met. In order to stand in the office of a New Testament priest, Leviticus 21 and 16, the Lord speaks unto Moses, saying, Speaking to Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed, in their generation that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach. A blind man or a lame or he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous or a man that is broken footed or broken handed or crook backed or, or a dwarf or that hath a blemish in his eye or be scurvy or scab or hath his stones broken no man that hath the blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire he hath a blemish, he shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. Amen. So, that, you know, I was reading this, I was like, man, that's quite a list of, quite a list of uh, disqualifications. And, and as I began to study it, I began to just look at it, and you know what? Uh, let's look at these specific requirements for the priesthood. The first one was a blemish, a defect, a spot, abnorm abnormality. You know, Jude tells us in Jude 1 and 23, uh, it says, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment that is spotted by the flesh. Mm, right. Amen. Uh, another scripture says that no flesh shall glory in my presence. Right. Amen. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I'd have to bring that in a New Testament priest. It's talking about you can't be living a carnal life and you can't be living a life 
that is spotted, him have that blemish of the flesh uh, living and being activated in your life. You've got to die out to that part of you and live your life according to the Lord. Right. Yep. The second point that was made here in Leviticus was blind, unable to see, blind through the idea of a film that covers the eyes. This translates to unwilling to see, incapable of seeing truthfully because we have allowed the flesh to blind us. Sometimes you can get so caught up in your ideology yeah. and your thoughts that you are blinded yeah. to what the truth of the Word of God says. But if you're going to be a New Testament priest, uh, amen, if you're going to be part of this priesthood today, uh, amen, you've got to cast off those scales off of your eyes. Uh, amen, you can't allow the flesh uh, and you can't allow the world to blind you anymore. But you need to be able to see clearly. And let me say something else. Uh, that sometimes uh, you are blinded because you've got a beam in your own eye. Uh, and the Lord says, don't be trying to pick a splinter uh, out of somebody else's eye uh, until you get that log out of your own eye. Yeah. Because when you have that in your eye, you can't see clearly. Right. Right. And it's important today. Uh, Amen. That we're not trying to point fingers at other people. Uh, but this is uh, a, a time of self-reflection to, to say, God, uh, is there some areas of my life? Uh, Lord, I want to be a New Testament priest. I want to live for you. Uh, I want to minister in your presence. Uh, amen. But God, I don't want to allow these things uh, that you said won't be coming in your presence uh, to be active in my life. I want to see clearly. Amen. Help me, Lord, to see clearly. Yeah. The word lame means to halt or limp. It speaks of indecision, neutrality. It means to pass over, to leave things undone, to ignore or reject necessary truth. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. The description of flat nose, the nose represents discernment. As in the natural, the nose can discern when things are good or rotten. Amen. You ever take that gallon of milk out of the fridge mm. after it's been sitting in there six months past it? Oh <laughs> what are you gonna do to try to determine if that's if that's good or bad? You're gonna stick your nose to it, and that's gonna discern to you whether or not that is good or bad. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. As in the natural, the nose can discern when things are good or rotten, fresh or spoiled. So in the spirit of the priest must have a keen sense of discernment. Yes. He must not allow his or her life to be filled with things that dull their spiritual powers of discernment. The priest must be able to know what is good and evil based upon the word of God and not the current of their times. Right. Amen. You don't base your discernment upon what does the world say is okay. Yeah. You don't base your discernment upon what is what does everybody, what does the, the majority of the people say? But you make sure to serve upon the word of God. Amen. Does the word of God say this is wrong? If he says it's wrong, it's wrong. And you don't need to go in that direction. Amen. You need to be able to discern according to the word of God. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. The next next uh, requirement that, that Moses talks about in Leviticus. God speaking to Moses is broken footed, broken handed. These just basically mean that no one can be a true priest of God half-heartedly. God will not accept broken or partial service in the priesthood. Yeah. He's not going to, he's not, if you say, Lord, well, I'm going to do this, but I really don't like fasting. I don't like praying. I don't like reading the word of God. You know, I don't have time for that. I, I had someone tell me one time, she came to me and she said, Brother John, I'm, I'm just not growing. I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to go to another church because I'm not growing. And I said, okay, well, let's talk about it. I'm not trying to keep you. I'm not trying to keep you here. And I told her, I said, I'm not trying to keep you here. If you want to go somewhere else, you're welcome to. But let's talk about it. Yeah. Why are you not growing? She said, I don't know. I said, well, is it the church? Oh, no, I love the church. I said, is it pastor? Oh, no, I love pastor. I said, is it the music? Oh, no, I love the music. And we went down all the night. I just described 
have to make it the church. And, oh, no, I'm not. It. And then I asked her, I said, how much time do you spend in prayer? How much time do you spend reading the word of God? And she told me, she said, well, you know, I'm really busy. I, I, maybe I don't spend much time. I said, that's the purpose. That's the reason why you're not growing. And you changing churches ain't going to fix that. Amen. If you say you go to another facility, and it's not going to change the fact that you're not taking the time in prayer and reading the word of God uh, to grow and to develop uh, your walk with the Lord. You can't live for God half-heartedly. You've got to be all in. You've got to, you've got to say, Lord, I surrender completely to you. Amen. You see, the foot represents our walk. The hand represents our words. We cannot walk half for God and half for ourselves and be called his priest and be part of this royal priesthood. That's right. Neither can we work half for ourselves and half for God and be called his priest. We've got to be committed to the work of the Lord. We've got to be committed to the kingdom of God. Amen. God's wanting to raise up a royal priesthood. Amen. He wants each and every one of us, amen, to grow in him and to become what he has called us to be. The next description that Moses talks about in Leviticus is superfluous. It means to extend or stretch out. Extra growths, abnormal growths. Things out of proportion with the rest of the body. Here we're made to know that a priest of God must live a very honest and realistic life. Our words must serve us and minister grace to the hearers. Amen. They must not mislead people or deceive people. Uh, yeah. Amen. We should live as we speak and speak as we live. We must not be excessive in any area of our lives. Right. But we must exemplify control and order in our lives. Amen. amen. That the Lord, amen, the, the Lord is a, is a Lord of order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amen. He doesn't want things out of order. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Growth does not happen when things are out of order. Yeah. That's right. There's got to be balance in your life. Yeah. Amen. The next little description is that Moses talks about is crooked back and dwarfed. This speaks of spiritual immaturity. Though full in natural years, yet dwarfed in spiritual maturity and usefulness within the body. As, as then in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Those who will not apply themselves to the biblical patterns and responsibilities will never serve as royal priest right. in God's priesthood. Right. Amen. You've got to grow, church. It's not just about just, you know, some people, we, we've had, I've known people over the years that, you know, they were faithful to church, but 20 years later they were, the same growth that they were when they came in. You know, there were things tripping them up that was tripping them up when they first came in. Right. You know, there's got to be some growth in your yeah. spirit. You, you don't want to you don't want to be uh, deformed in the spirit. Right. You don't want to allow you know, you know, and a lot of times deformity and the spirit comes from, and also the flesh can come from malnutrition. Amen. Not taking in the things that, not receiving the things that you need to grow. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I mean, in, in the flesh, if you don't take in the proper nutrients, uh, amen, then you will find some issues in your body. Uh, amen. And if you don't allow the proper spiritual nutrients, uh, and you don't receive those, and you don't allow them to to uh, to uh, uh, work in your life, uh, then you will find that you're not growing spiritually, and God wants you to grow. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Good teaching. Amen. Amen. The next one is blemish in the eye. This is actually speaking of the mind, of the perception, and it means to have confusion of the mind. You. You can never serve or minister as a priest with a mind that is allowed to run free. Amen. Paul said you've got to gird up the loins of your mind. You've got to cast down imaginations and every high thing 
that exalt itself into the knowledge of God. And you've got to bring him to captivity. Yeah. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Right. Yeah. Amen. To be, a, to be a part of this New Testament priesthood, you can't allow your mind to just run wild. Thinking about all kinds of ungodly things. Right. The scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's important what you think. Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I, teach, I teach the hyphen class, uh, and um, I'm really stressing it with them because, you know, they're of the age where they can act upon the thoughts. <laughs> and I tell them, I said, it's important that you control what you think. Yes. And you don't allow just any thought to run and wrap it in your mind. You don't allow any, just any thought to just have free reign and access to your mind. Uh, amen. If a thought comes in your head and it's bad, you need to get rid of it. You need to uh, rebuke it in Jesus' name. And say, I'm not thinking that way. I'm going to keep my mind on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. Because it starts with a thought. It's a seed. Yeah. And the devil, my dad told me one time before, he said, can't help the can't help the thoughts. You can't have the birds that fly over, yeah. but you can keep them from roosting. Yeah. That's right. In other words, the devil he'll throw all kinds of darts at you, all kinds of thoughts trying to get you to bite. He'll there try to tempt you in so many ways. So, right. Amen. But it's it's your decision whether or not you're going to dwell upon it. Yeah. It's your decision whether or not you're going to take that thought in and say, "I'm going to I'm going to think about this." Right. Amen. And sometimes people they can be. Um, they can mistakenly think that, oh, what I think about doesn't matter because it's not hurting anybody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, God's going to judge you yes. one day according to every idle word that you speak, every thought that you think, yes. everything that everything that you have dwelt upon and you've allowed to come into your life. Uh, amen. That is not under the blood. You need to make sure that if, if, if up to this point you've been struggling in these areas. You need to repent today uh, yeah. and put it under the blood yeah. and let the Lord cover you. Let the Lord forgive you uh, and make up your mind that from this day forward uh, I want to be a New Testament yeah. priest. I want to keep my mind free uh, yeah. amen, from all the junk and the filth that's in this world. Amen. amen. To serve as priests, you must have the loins of your mind girded at all times. Yeah. Your mind must be established in the word of God. Amen. The, if you've got confusion in your life and you've got all kinds of turmoil, yeah. you need to get your mind on the Lord. Yeah. Where God says that he will keep him in perfect peace yeah. whose mind is stayed on him. Yeah. Hallelujah. You've got, you, you've got turmoil and confusion in your mind. You need to get your mind stayed on the Lord. Yeah. You need to allow the Lord. You need to you need to let that mind that was in Christ Jesus uh, be in you. Uh, you need to read Philippians chapter 4. Uh, and there's a whole list of things uh, that Paul says, this is what you need to think about. Amen. 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 If it's not good, uh, if it's not of a good report, uh, if, it's not, if it's not holy, don't be thinking about those things. Yeah. Keep your mind right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And finally, Finally, Paul, or Moses talks, God speaking to Moses, he says, scurvy and scab. Scurvy is an itch. There are some people, it seems, who are always itching about something. They're always restless. The least thing can set them off. You cannot be itchy and minister as God's priests. Amen. You need to have a sound mind. You need to, and, and you know what? If you physically got some ailments in your mind, uh, amen. The, the Lord wants to minister to you and he wants to help you and he wants to give you grace. Uh, amen. But but just always being flighty and always going from one thing. The scripture says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, amen. Just always itching, trying to go here and go there. Uh, amen. Not satisfied with the music. So I want to go somewhere else. Yeah. Amen. Get some stability about you. I mean, you want to minister as a, in the royal priesthood. You've got to be a stable person. Uh, amen. You've got to be steadfast, uh, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. 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 Yeah, good and then the second one is scab. And I've learned this from my wife. <laughs> because, man, I cut myself and it begins to heal. 
And I just mess with it. I just mess with it. I extend my soreness probably by months just because I keep messing with it. And my wife, she tell me, she says, stop touching it. You're, you're, you're making it come back. You, you know, it's not healing because you keep messing with it. Scab is a sore or eruptive disease. This speaks of someone who will never let wounds heal. Yeah. They have sores in their lives and they never allow them to heal. Yeah. They're always scratching off the scabs. God's, God never said that we wouldn't ever have any scars. But, but scars are the evidence of a wound that is healed. Yeah. 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 That's right. You can never minister effectively as a priest of God with a tendency to keep sores open in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And finally, the last thing is stones broken. This speaks of manhood, the power to reproduce, the power to sow the seed that produces life. One of the greatest opposers to the priesthood of God has always been the spirit of Jezebel. She wants to castrate the priesthood. She wants to emasculate the spirit of the prophet. She hates authority. She rebels against the authority of the prophetic presence of God in the church. Jesus. Amen. Emasculate means to strip of power. No, Jezebel didn't mind men around her as long as they were stripped of their manhood. For you and I to stand in the office of the priest, it means that we have got to be spiritual men and women of authority who will not allow the spirit of Jezebel to strip us of that anointing and our spiritual power. We cannot be passive and be priest of God. You, you cannot be dominated and intimidated or manipulated by man, woman, money, or the world and be the priest of God. You have to be God's man and God's woman and be willing to say that's Say the Lord, yes. regardless of what happens to me. Yes. Yes. Are we productive? In, is our lives reflecting Christ? Now I'm coming to a close this morning. Can we reproduce in others the reality of Christ that lives in us? Do we qualify to be New Testament priests? And I close with my text in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, yes. a royal priesthood and holy nation of peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yeah. Amen. Walking in this priesthood is up to you. The Lord has provided you the opportunity. That's yeah. right. But you've yeah. got to be willing. Yes. You've got to be willing to do what it takes yes. to operate and work and mani manifest yes. God in your life. Yes. Right. Amen. Can we stand this morning? Mm -hmm. We got a few minutes. Actually, I think I'm a little early. But uh, we have a we have a few minutes that uh, we can take it. You can go in the restroom and take a break before we change the order of the service. Amen. God wants us to be a royal priesthood. Yes, he wants yes. us to, to work in the kingdom. We've got a job to do. Yes. Good Amen. We've got a job to do. My, my. Amen. And, and it, it matters how we act. It matters yeah. what we talk about. It matters what we think about. Yeah. It matters the direction of our life. Absolutely. Amen. What, what direction is your life going today? Yeah. Amen. Are you going towards the Lord or are you going towards the world? Right. Amen. I, 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 I told, I told my wife one time we were, when my wife, when we first got married, my, I was in the Navy, and I, I was around, twenty four seven. I was around horrible people all the time. They, they talked horrible. They, they, uh, they were just, yeah. And once the military, you're around them. Cussing every day, cussing all the time, and drinking. I tell you what, in the, in the, there, that's really you know drinking like a sailor, and <laughs> cussing like a sailor. There, that's a real thing. And uh, you know, I was around it all the time. And and one time, uh, Emily and I, we we uh, were taking someone out to eat, and uh, or they invited us to go eat with them. And uh, one of them, 
one of them orders, orders a beer. And Emily, this is when we first got there, Emily, boy, I saw the change come over her. She stiffened up. <laughs> and she was like, she didn't know what to think. And uh, and I, I was just I just tried to keep it casual and and uh, afterwards she she was really disturbed by it. And and and, and, I, and I told her I was I said, you know, I said that person has really come he, he's turning his life around. Yeah, he's still got he's still doing that, but he's coming he's coming in the direction. He's turning around and I said, sometimes it's important to, you know, think about the direction that I mean, you don't want to go into a bar and where all drinking's all around. You don't want to go in that atmosphere at all. Uh, but you know, if I had jumped on him and I said, what are you, what are you doing drinking beer with my wife sitting right here? What do you think? You know, he, he was, it was normal for him. Right. He, he was eating a steak and he, he just, that's what he likes to do. And, and, and I told her, and, and we talked about it. And, and, and uh, you know, that, you know, a lot of times God is more concerned about direction than just individual actions. Sometimes we get so hung up on these individual actions that we forget about the direction. You see, the prodigal son was not anywhere close to being home. He was dirty. He was stinky. He hadn't taken a shower. He just came from the pig pen. But when father saw the change of direction... When he saw that, hey, my son, he, and he was yet a far off. Yeah. Father ran to him and fell upon him. Yeah. See, God wants our direction to be right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you know what? In changing your direction, it's going to fix all the objects. It's going to fix all the individual hangouts. Yes. Once, you, once you change your direction, and that's what repentance is all about. Yes. Yes. Repentance is all about direction. Amen. It is. Yeah. The word repent means about face. Right. You military guys, you know what that is. About face, you do a 180. That's right. You, and it's about the direction that you're going. And and so if if you found yourself hanging up and, and having some issues and having some problems, and maybe some of these things that I've talked about today, amen, that you found that, hey, that's been active in my life. Uh, amen. Change direction today and say, Lord, I'm going to give myself holy to you. Yeah. I'm going to walk holy after you. Yeah. And, and guess what? When you truly turn and you walk towards the Lord, yes. the Lord will take care of all the drinking. Yes. The Lord will take care of all the smoking. The Lord will take care of all that other stuff that you've been hanging on to. Because you can't go in the direction of God and hang on to all of that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What a great God we serve. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, God, to be in your presence. Lord, thank you, God. Lord, help us today. God, oh my Lord, we want to worship you and exalt you today, for you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to be in your presence. Lord, I ask God for you to help us today. And help us to draw closer to you and make sure our direction is right. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen.